Praise the Lord. God bless you for tuning in to watch today. I believe that your life will not remain the same after an encounter today with the word of the Lord. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light. And I pray that the light of God will shine brightly into your heart, into your, your life, into your soul. And every darkness will be exposed that you will be free to serve the Lord. Amen. I don't want to take too much of your time. I want, to, I want you to just spare me uh, 15 minutes. I just want to speak to your heart. 15 minutes. And today, um, the word that is on my heart that I want to minister to you is the love of God. The love of God. Uh, many of us, we know what the love of God is. We know the unconditional love of God. We've heard it. But I want the Spirit of God to take us through um, another route today. It's the same message, um, but just lend me your ear. Amen. Now, there is a narrative in uh, the Gospels according to um, um, St. John. Uh, Apostle John, and I, I want to share that with you, and it's in uh, John chapter 8, verse 1, that narrative from John chapter 8, verses 1 through to the verse number, um, uh, to the verse number 11, the verse number 11. Now, because of time, 15 minutes, I'm not going to read everything, but those of you that know, if you don't know, just read it. Um, it says that there was a woman that was caught in the act of adultery caught in the very act of adultery. Amen? Caught in the very act of adultery. So meaning that the process was still going on and they somehow caught the woman. Okay? Uh, so in this case, there was no defense for this woman. There is no way that this woman could say that it's not her because they caught her in the very act. All right, they caught her in the very act. Therefore, she is guilty as charged. The Pharisees caught her. She was guilty as charged. Now, I don't know what it is that you might be experiencing today or what it is that you've been caught in. Maybe you've been caught in fornication. All right? Maybe you've been caught in uh, lies. Maybe you've been, you've been caught in theft. Or perhaps maybe you've not been caught by anybody. But you do know that you are living a life of sin. You are living a life that does not glorify God. There are certain things in your life that you know within your soul that doesn't please God. All right? And the devil is taking that advantage to break your courage, to discredit your name, to discredit you, to make you feel as though that there is nothing in this world that you could do. So this woman that was caught in the act of adultery now was presented before Jesus. Now, according to the law of Moses, anyone that is caught in adultery, fornication, they must be stoned to death. So they presented their case before Jesus and they cited scripture that it is stated that this person must be condemned. Must be what? Must be condemned. So there is an accusation. You have been caught. Uh, and the devil has passed a sentence of condemnation upon you. Maybe as I'm speaking to you, you feel so bad about some experience that happened maybe last year, maybe last two years, maybe yesterday, maybe today as I'm speaking to you. And the devil keeps making you feel so guilty as if that you are the worst of worst people ever that lived on the face of the earth. And you can't go into public. And you can't even go into the church of God. There is nothing that you do that God will be pleased. There is no more hope for you. And that is what the devil is whispering. These people are the woman's accusers. They came to accuse this woman before Jesus. Can I be bold and put it to you that the devil is our accuser. In, in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verses 9 through to 11, the Bible makes us understand that it is the devil who is the accuser of what? Of brethren. So, therefore, the guilt that you are feeling is not of God. It is the devil. He wants to make you feel so bad to make you feel that nothing, nothing, nothing else matter. And some of us 
as, as we are listening right now, some of you are, are, have allowed the enemy to beat you so down that you even want to commit suicide. You even want to kill yourself because you feel that you are not worthy. But you see, this is where I want you to understand that Christ Jesus did not come here on the face of this earth to condemn you. He did not die to condemn you. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation. All right. So as they presented this woman before Jesus and they wanted Jesus to also condone their condemnation, the Bible says at last in verse 11 that it says, it says that if no man was able to con condemn you, because in the discourse, Jesus asked the people that if anyone among you have not sinned before, you should first cast the stone. And lo and behold, every one of them left because they have what? They have also sinned before. They were not caught, but they have sinned before. So the Lord Jesus said, if no man condemns you, then I do not condemn you, but rather go and sin no more. Meaning that I'm not going to take your life away. All right. I'm not going to take your life away. But I'm giving you another opportunity to what? To live right, to change your life, to make sure that you're doing the things that God has called you to do. And that is why I'm here today. I'm here to let you understand that God has not condemned you, but he is giving you another opportunity. If you can sleep and wake up and you can hear me, you can walk, you can feel whatever it is that you could do, you do. That means that God is giving you another opportunity in this life. Life. another opportunity in this life neither do i condemn you you are not condemned by jesus the way you are seeing yourself is not the way that jesus sees you now there is a, a, a scripture in romans chapter chapter 8 okay romans chapter 8 uh, verse, verse 35 and, and, and paul says this that who shall separate us from the love of christ shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. What can separate us from the love of God? What? What can separate us from the love of God? In John chapter 3 verse 16, it says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but what? But have everlasting life. So God did not come to condemn. But gave to what? Came to give us grace that we will be able to what? To live. So he said, I came that you might have life and abundance with that life. If you are listening to me, it doesn't matter what mess you find yourself in. It doesn't matter what sin you have committed. It doesn't matter what it is that happened. As long as you are not dead but alive, there is an opportunity for you to change your life. To change your life. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 38. Amen? Romans chapter 8, verse, verse 38 and 39. And I'm going to read. It says that, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, all right, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither height nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And, and, and even as, as I say, I'm, I'm saying Jesus loves you, I hear the song ringing, Jesus loves me, yes I know. For the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you and he has a future for you. He has a destiny for you. He has a plan for you. But all he needs you to do today is for you to turn your life around and give yourself to him. Give yourself to him. He says, if you repent from your sins and come back to me, I will take you again, cleanse you up, and use you for my glory. I am a living testimony of that. Moses that God used incredibly in the Bible, he committed what? Murder. But yet God gave him another opportunity. 
David, you, you would say, well, my, you don't understand. I, I, I am on drugs. I sleep around. I, I, I steal. I do this. I do that. I'm a homosexual. I, da, da, da. It does not matter. The love of God is so much more powerful than anything else in this world. David was a man that the Bible says after the heart of God, but David killed. David committed adultery. David fornicated, but God still gave him another opportunity. My brothers, my sisters listening to me, it is time to give ourselves to God. And today, if you are listening to me, and you believe that Jesus loves you and he came to die for you. There's another scripture that says, whilst we were yet sinners, he died for us. He came to die for you and you want to give your life to him. I want you to just lift up your hands and pray that Jesus, I believe that you are the son of the living God and that you came to die for me. I repent of my sins. I accept you into my life as my Lord and personal savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And that's it. You are saved. You are saved. Maybe you have backslided and you want to rededicate your life to God. Just go before him and say, Lord, I've backslided and I've sinned against you. But today I've come back and I give myself to you again. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me. And that is it. Jesus loves you more than you can ever know. Don't allow anybody to tell you anything else. Don't allow the devil to bully you to make you feel that you are not worthy. He has a lot in store for you. Give yourself to Jesus and your life will never be the same. Jesus loves you and I love you too. Until then, I am Fred Watting. God bless you. Jesus, Jesus.